Hey guys, what's up? It's L Supersonic Q, and welcome to the LSSQ cast for Saturday, April 8th, 2017. Um, just for people in the chat and stuff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like wait five, ten minutes. Uh, I did kind of start kind of early. Uh, I want like the mods to get here and stuff like that. So we're not gonna go super hard right this second, but I want to set it up and let people roll in instead of just having like the wait screen on. So, hey guys, um, yeah, I just, hi. Um, I recognize a lot of old faces and also some new ones, so uh, thanks for stopping by, and I hope I can entertain you for the couple hours uh, we're going to do this stream. So just to kind of give you guys a little rundown, a preview, uh, for the title, I pretty much copied directly what I wrote on my list of topics this week. So we're going to cover all that stuff. Um, but there's also going to be some really cool, nice stuff uh, before we get into the topics. Um, I'll show you guys that uh, in a second. And when I say show... I mean show, um, but we're gonna wait a little bit on that. We'll wait till around seven thirty. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess to generally to generally start things, how have you guys been doing? Um, I did only stream a week ago, right? Did I? I mean, I had to stream last week, but it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like it's been a week. I don't know if it's just because last week's stream wasn't memorable and like a lot happened this week or what, but it feels like it's been longer than just a week. Um, I don't think I've been up to too much myself. Well, videos, obviously. Um, and I know that a lot of you guys have been, uh, like, subbing me and watching my content and all that kind of stuff, so that's really nice. I'm really glad you guys are enjoying that. Uh, more videos, you know, soon. Uh, it just kind of sucks because we're at a point now where I kind of got out all the videos that I wanted to get out. Um, like... The mystery of Kelly Toy Chow and like JBVO and stuff like those were kind of in the pipeline for a while, and now that all of those are kind of already out and done, I don't really have anything else I can air right away. Um, the mystery of spinoff series might take another week or so to get out, and I don't really have anything else to just show. Um, but otherwise, um, the videos are obviously going to keep coming and stuff. So, yeah. Um, also, as a general rule of thumb, try not to swear in the chat just because, uh, yeah, kind of keep it PG, maybe PG-13, but yeah, people have been using the F word quite a bit recently in like my videos and stuff as comments, which is kind of odd, not really sure what's prompting that, but yeah. Um, aside from that, I uh, was doing stuff in the Chow Garden, Sonic Adventure 2 Chow Garden. I wanted to get that invisible Chow. And a transparent chow. And I actually got them fairly easily. Not as hard as I would thought they were going to be to, like, obtain. And I wanted to do some other crazy breeding stuff, but... I don't know. I just, like, didn't really feel the need to do that. So, I don't know. kind of sucks. I wanted to do more with the chows, but it didn't really happen, I guess. Um, I'll read some comments for a little bit. Um, and then... It will be going around uh, 7.30. Maybe we can jump into some topics. Or, no, I said 7.30. Might as well wait till 7.30. <laughs> I'll read some comments now. Uh, 7.30, we'll, we'll really start with the topics and stuff. Uh, Waffleco said, why haven't you talked about... Yeah, okay, guys, can you not... Okay, don't... Anything that's not, like, PG-rated, just don't say in the chat. Like, at all. Um, or I'll delete the message. Like, I'm going <laughs> like, to delete this one right now. Um, yeah, just don't do that. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, uh, Waffleco said, why haven't you talked about the Sega Neptune? Um, uh, mostly because it never really came up in my Lost Media research. I never really, I don't know, it just never came up. And I never really looked into it, and it's like kind of an obscure topic, even in regards to Sega stuff. Uh, now that you mention it, it isn't something interesting I'd, you know, I'd, uh, I might look into in the future now that you know, now that you mention it, um, but it wasn't really planned to be talked about or anything like that. And I don't know anything about it, so I can't really like comment on it. But uh, Beam Blaster Ten said, "How's your day been?" Well, actually, got some pretty crazy stories from today, um, and that's going to involve the Comic Con topic of things.
Yeah, so I got some crazy stuff to talk about from today. Um, so that'll be a little later. That falls into the Comic-Con category. Uh, and Mario was saying, can you give me the link to the first setting of the Kelly Toy chat plush? Um, the link is just an image. If you go to my Mystery of Children Flapjack video, the first comment, which I believe is pinned, is the link to the picture, but that's all it is. There's no 4chan thread that it's still attached to. It's just the picture. So, Editor 97 said, I'm after a mysterious German Raichu plush. I think he's one of the Mirage ones. Ooh, I don't like the Mirage plushes at all. I just, I really don't like them. So that's, hmm. Well, good luck with that. But I don't, not super into that. Uh, cartoon Lover said, I have the Chowder Kelly toy plushes in the chat. My mom works for the company. Oh, JK Church, I was going to say, you got to provide pics or I just wouldn't even believe that to begin with. Uh, just so many people. It's just so easy. Just in everybody, like in every video that showcases rare or desired things, it's so easy for anyone to say, I have this or like, you know, whatever. So the first few times people did do that to me, I did believe them. But like after like the third time, I'm like, okay, like obviously people just say things. So um, I, yeah. From now on, when people just say stuff, I literally just say, like, show me a pic. And even when people show me a pic, uh, <laughs> this is a funny story. So I think today is, I think today is going to be um, just a whole story stream, a bunch of crazy stories and stuff. And actually, Mr. Video VGM said, your voice sounds tired or something. Yeah, it is tired because I've been talking for literally uh, like eight hours straight at Comic-Con, which is a topic I want to get into at some point with all the stories. Um, but the story with the uh, with the fake picture thing. So back to my, what is it? Um, man, what video is it? The Golden Game Boy Advance video. Um, obviously, like, the story goes that there were golden tickets placed into the boxes of, like, the Zelda GBAs or whatever. And someone messaged me on, like, I think, or I think they posted a comment and they're like, um, yeah, I have one of the tickets. I never redeemed it. So I sell the ticket and I'm like, oh really? Like, can you show me some pics? Cause you know, I don't believe you. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, just PM me on Twitter asking for pics and I'll know which you are. So I'm like, Hey dude, you got the pics? He's like, yeah, I got a pic, <laughs> but my camera is kind of bad. Oh, sorry about that. Um, he said my camera's kind of bad, and um, my workspace is messy. The guy sends me a blurry picture from super duper far away. You can hardly even tell that it's a ticket. And obviously this is fake enough as it is, but I looked closer, and part of his carpet and like table is clear. So he used a blur tool to blur stuff out in Photoshop, and I called him out, and I'm like, did you just send me... A picture that you blurred yourself trying to claim you have the ticket and he's like no my camera is just bad and I'm like all right well thanks for showing me but i don't believe you and that was that just like oh like why even waste my time seriously whoa 34 people watching guys we broke the record awesome ed mario said lc persona q a few lost nickelodeon bumpers were found today oh that's pretty cool i don't really follow bumpers much but it's pretty cool they were found so Awesome. I might check that out later, maybe. All right, T-minus few minutes, and then, or, yeah, one minute or so, then we're going to start. Quote-unquote start. Uh, Riala said, oh, wait, L Supersonic, are we abandoning the glorious stream formula where we have, like, ten minutes of topics before reading <laughs> the two hours of comments? To some extent, well, yeah, I did kind of start weird tonight, but just because the time, the timing was a little off tonight. Um, and I have some other stuff to, like, do aside from just topics but but yeah most streams it's usually just like 10 minute topics um hopefully i, I have more to talk about especially in regards to the kappa mikey stuff and like jbbo stuff so um there should be some more stuff um uh john i'm not gonna do any hosts tonight uh just because i it was not in the plan at all so i just no plans to do that tonight sorry uh maybe in the future ultra cheesy studios said you should look into lost ugly dolls like Picky, he is lost. Yeah, um, maybe you and some other people were commenting that. 
once again, the issue with looking into collectibles and stuff is... Like, I, I have to really be interested in it to research it, and I don't really care for ugly dolls, so that would kind of be a stretch to get a good video for. Um, actually, while I'm thinking about it, Amazing John did want me to say that he has some kind of, like, thing, I guess, in his mouth, like, a dentist thing, kind of like a retainer. I don't exactly know what it's called, but he wanted me to tell you guys that he's going on a hiatus for a little bit uh, while he takes care of that, so no Amazing John for the time being. But hopefully he can get that Popco script done in the meantime, and maybe video game Clay Models 3. Brian said, what if we got 40 viewers? I'd be super happy. Um, Loller949 is new to the channel. Well, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed tonight. And Vinny Animation said, sup, everyone. Mohammed Barr said, do you know if they found any new JBVO episodes? I don't believe they did, because... the. I mean, from the time that I posted my video, it's still relatively new, and I don't think people have really searched that hard for it yet, but at some point, I'm sure they will. Um, well, it's, it's 7.31 my time, so I think we're going to start with the topics. The first topic we're going to start with is Comic-Con. So, what I mean by that is, there was a local convention that I guess happened annually, and I didn't even know about it until its second year. Uh, but I participated in it last year, as well as this year. It was today. Last year, I did really good. Um, sold a lot of stuff, met a lot of really cool people and stuff. It was a really fun time and, you know, made a lot of money and I had a fun time. This year, I was, and that's, like I said earlier, this is also why my voice is like it is and stuff. I'm kind of tired because I've, I've been there from, or I woke up this morning at uh, 7.30 and I've, you know, I've been out all day. Um. And I've I've really been talking and stuff since like ten o'clock, you know, like because that's when it started. I went from ten to six, so that's what that's about. Um, but like I said, they they had it today, and I was really optimistic about it because of how successful I was last time. I'm like, oh man, uh, I'm gonna like sell a lot of stuff. Uh, because the thing is, I, I I planned ahead for it. Last time, I missed my chance to get a booth like right when they went on sale. So I'm like, man, I'm not gonna bother sculpting for this because I'm not gonna get a spot. And then, like, a couple weeks later, a spot opened up and I got it. The issue with that is that I only had, like, minimal time to get uh, sculptures and stuff done for it. So, this year, I started way back in February. I planned out uh, clay sets. I planned out drawings. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, this year did not yield results comparable to last year, which is really a shame. Hopes on it. And it just didn't work out. Um, there were some funny stories along the way, but let me just give you guys a little gist of this. And, and you guys, this, this kind of comes into play with you guys. It's not, you might like to hear what I have to say about it. And I do want to tell you guys, cause it's kind of a fun story to, you know, this as a whole recollection, because I didn't do a vlog this year, like I did last year. So I kind of want to document this in some kind of, um, you know, like tangible way. Um, but also you guys might, might kind of come in towards the end a little bit as I explain. So yeah. Did not sell a lot of stuff. I had more stuff than last year. Did not sell a lot of it to any extent. Um, I think I, ha I had around 36 models or so. Um, like five or six paintings. Uh, I sold 10 models and no paintings. So it was really bad. I don't really know why because... I mean, I didn't do anything differently than last year. Uh, I just had better character diversity, if anything. And I had better displays and better pieces in general. So I think it was just maybe a combination of just bad timing. Like it was a nice day out. So many people just didn't want to be inside at like a convention. Um, we were in a slightly different spot than last year. So maybe just foot traffic, you know, and eye contact with our booth wasn't there. Um, there generally speaking was a lot fewer people in, in general, I noticed, than there were last year. So that too. Um, but also a lot of kids, cause honestly, that's what most of my market is, is like kids, especially little kids, uh, when it comes to Pokemon specifically, um, a lot of kids would pick up stuff and be like, oh, I want this. And the mom would kind of just be like, oh no, like think about what you want to spend your money on and stuff. And it's like, <sighs> cause I probably lost that on like three or four or five sales that way. Um, where people pick stuff up and they were, were going to buy it and their parents were just like, oh, like, no, don't, don't buy that. I'm like, oh, man. 
So anyway, there were quite a few funny stories today. I'll give you some of the highlights. Um, one of, this is the thing too, is there were, last time there were a lot of people I like kind of connected with and really got into, you know, in-depth conversations. This time, even with the people that bought my stuff, a lot of it was kind of just like a kid picking up, you know, a Pokemon and being like, you know, like Charmander. And then I just, you know, give it to them or sell it to them rather. Um, but there was a few really cool people that I really, you know, just highlights in my head. Uh, there's this one guy I was talking about. Uh, he didn't buy anything, but he was a really cool guy to talk to. Um, ironically, he didn't even notice any of my sculptures, but he noticed my, because like I said, I had a display going on. I used my Nintendo Vans box, like the shoe box, as a display. I put stuff on it. So it, the box is like an NES. And ironically, instead of looking at any of my stuff, he noticed the NES box of Vans. Um, and he said, oh, man, like you got the, the Nintendo Vans? He's like, I wanted those. But um, in the five seconds it took for me to think about if I really wanted to spend the money on them, they were sold out. And he's like, classic Nintendo, uh, you know, not making enough supply to meet demand. And then all the scalpers get in there and, you know, put them on eBay. And I'm like, yo, this guy, uh, he knows what scalpers are. And he, you know, he hates scalpers. He's familiar with that culture. So I kind of started talking to him a little bit. I'm like, oh, like, yeah, I hate scalpers. Like, that's all people do now with Nintendo stuff, whether it be the games or the Amiibos or the World of Nintendo figures. Uh, it's crazy. And he uh, he agrees with me. It was just really cool because he said he was an NES collector. And he said that he was only missing like five or so games from his collection. Um, I should have asked him a little bit in, in depth about like what games he was missing or anything like that. It would have been cool to kind of talk a little bit deeper about that. But uh, he said he was a collector and he was missing five games. And pretty much he was saying that if he didn't collect when he started collecting, there's no way he'd be able to get all the games he had now, which is true. And, it, you know, I, I said that, I'm like, yeah, I know retro game scalping is like a huge issue. So I thought that was really cool that there was someone in real life that, you know, has issues with scalpers and stuff. It's not just me. It's not just like, you know, like th these streams. I'm not a crazy person who, you know, complains at other people's, um, you know, fortune of flipping a mario party 5 luigi for 500 dollars like it's an actual issue and it affects collectible communities so that was pretty cool now one of my favorite stories from the day this is a story for the ages so as i said i really couldn't sell anything all day and i was really drained by like 4 p.m and i'm like you want to know what meme time i printed out doubles of some of my pictures because some of it is digital so I had doubles of, of one Sonic picture and I took off the price tag and I wrote free or no, I wrote literally free and I put it on there and I put it back in my display. And now the point of this was to not only see how long it would take for someone to realize I had a free item on my table, but also to see if anyone was going to even care because it was Sonic and I wanted to see if there were any Sonic fans out there. Um, so I do that. 45 minutes pass, and there was some foot traffic. It, you know, it wasn't like no one showed up. There was some foot traffic. 45 minutes passed, and then uh, someone, maybe like middle school age, uh, came over with their friend, and they said, what does this mean literally free? And I'm like, it's what it says. It's literally free. I can't sell this stuff, and I just don't care. And they're like, oh, wow, really? And I'm like, yeah, like, do you want it? And they're like, sure. <laughs> and I'm like, you do know who Sonic is, right? Like, you're not just buying it because it's free, and and she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know I know Sonic and stuff. I used to play some of his games and stuff. So it was pretty cool. Um, and then later on, actually, they did come back and buy um, a clay sculpture from me. So I ended up winning. They ended up winning. But I just thought that was so funny. Like, it took 45 minutes for, you know, someone to realize I had a free Sonic picture, you know, on my table. Like, that should give you a good idea of how today went. Um, so I just thought that was really, like, really funny. Um, you know, wasn't expecting to give something away for free, but I mean, if that's what it was going to take to sell, uh, you know, sculptures, maybe I should have had free giveaway things. Um, I think for the most part, though, I'm trying to think of some other funny stories that happened. Um, there was this other guy I talked to towards the end of the convention um, where he was into, uh, actually, I'm trying to remember. At this point in the day, I was just so, like, fried. I didn't even, like, 
or I don't remember exactly. Um, he was talking about N64 or something, uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Um, he bought it for like $40, and then like the next day, um, the sellers or something were asking like 140 and he's like, oh man, I looked out there. So kind of, you know, again, with like the, you know, price gouging, that kind of thing. Um, and there was this guy with a Japanese Banjo-Kazooie like cover art shirt, which I assume was a custom, but I thought that was quite odd that, you know, there was um, someone with like a shirt like that there. And also our booth was right across from this seller who had like ultimate muscle, like um, like single color figures or Keshi. I don't know if that's what the American stuff is called, but the Japanese equivalent is Keshi. I got excited because I'm like, oh, maybe he has some like Mario Keshi or like Zelda Keshi. Unfortunately, he did not. Most of it was just customs. He did have some official stuff, but it was all Ultimate Muscle stuff. Um, and I think otherwise, um, last year there was a there's a barcade in the area and last year they brought some games in like Donkey Kong, Dig Dug and uh, Miss Pac-Man. I was hoping they were going to have some more games. Um, but this year they only brought in some kind of like Spider-Man four player beat em up game. I wasn't familiar with it. I wasn't really interested because it's Spider-Man. So I didn't play it or anything, but that happened. Um, so it's kind of unfortunate. I, I did make a really good contact with them though, which I was very, very happy with. Um, there was this person I was just wandering around kind of passing out free tokens. I plan on going to this barcade at some point because I want to play some of their games. They have uh, like Metal Slug. And these are like, or, like original authentic cabinets, arcade cabinets. They have Metal Slug. Oh, I want to play some IRL Metal Slug on a cabinet. That'd be sick. But anyway, uh, so they were kind of walking around giving away these free token cards. And, you know, she, I kind of figured she would, you know, make a point of this because I had, you know, Nintendo stuff for sale. And she's like, oh, wow, like, you got a lot of Nintendo stuff for sale. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, you know, we were thinking about doing some kind of like little sidewalk bazaar, some kind of conventions around the barcade. Um, and you would be a really good fit because obviously I had Nintendo stuff. And she took my card and she said that uh, she took a picture of my booth and said she'd show it to like her staff and stuff and maybe, you know, work something out with me whenever they decide to do that. Cause that would be really cool. I'd be down for that. Cause I feel like in that kind of situation, oh yeah. Mario stuff would sell in super obscure things that would never sell at like a, you know, at like a local Comic Con, like Street Fighter, or like you know, stuff like that. That stuff would probably sell really well at you know this barcade. So, um, hopefully that contact doesn't end up like the head of the arts district that took my card a couple of summers ago and never got back to me when she saw one of my chalk drawings. So maybe something will come from this. That'd be great. I think though. Um, it largely does for Comic Con. Wasn't the I mean I had like an okay day, but I mean it, it just didn't reach my expectations in any way, shape, or form. So that's really unfortunate. But Comic Con discussion is not over. So obviously I have a lot of unsold stock, and this is where you guys come in. So I do have an Etsy and I do have like a Patreon. I have all this stuff. But instead of just like throwing it up on there or doing some kind of dumb thing like that and being like, hey guys, check out this, you know, my Etsy and I link a random thing in the chat. I think it's time we do some some face cam. And in doing that, I'm going to show you guys the stuff that did not sell today from Arts Fest, which is a, or from Comic Con, which is quite a bit of quality stuff, like stuff that I am amazed didn't sell. So, pretty much, I do plan on listing all this stuff on eBay or Etsy or something like that at some point. But if you guys are interested in my, you know, in these sculptures and drawings, what you can do at your own leisure or whatever is, like, uh, send me a message on YouTube or, like, an email or something. And let me know if you're interested in any of these specifically. And, we, you know, I can hook you up with, like, you know, a... a like a, a PM deal or something. So you don't have to go through eBay and stuff. You know, we can, we can work something out if you're interested in any of these sculptures, because I really would like to get them out there. They're not doing me any good. And the next convention isn't for another couple months. And honestly, I might just go the Pokemon route for it and just do all Pokemon. Because let me tell you when Luigi Bowser and wing cat Mario and Pikachu don't sell at comic con, that's an issue. Um, Pokemon stuff was the big seller, and I was left with tons of mainstream Mario stuff. So that's really weird. Uh, but hopefully, if you guys want any of these, it would do me some good to, you know, and they're not going to be outrageous prices or whatever. So they're not going to be like $50 figures or anything like that. 
So if you guys are interested, let me know because I could really use the money. And these are some really good looking sculptures. Honestly, I would like some of these to be in the hands of you guys. Like, I'll kind of go through this set by set. Um, I pretty much have a complete Mario 64 clay set. And like, Wing Cat Mario, like Metal Mario, Bowser, Goomba, you know, like, it's like the UFO set. So with that said, let me get things rolling here. Now, I'm straight from Comic-Con. Wait, hold up. Face cam. I'm straight from Comic-Con, so I didn't, like, do anything, like, change or anything. So it's just, it is what it is. If I look tired, I look tired. But I want to show you guys on stream. And also, I think some of you guys wanted a face cam thing. So I want to show you guys some of the stuff that I have that did not sell. So we're going to start with sculptures. I'll take this set by set. And like I said, let me know if you guys want any of these or anything like that. Or if you know someone who's going to want these because I like them in the hands of people that want them, and I don't really want them. So, they are cool, though, but I hope you guys can see this. The quality is probably, like, horrible, but it's the best I can do, so. First up is Wing Cat Mario. So, these are all made out of Sculpey clay. They're just little, like, you know, mini figures and stuff, but here's Wing Cat Mario. I'll try and, like, hold him so you can kind of see him instead of a glitchy camera, which is probably happening. Uh, so, this set specifically was based off of the Banpresto UFO plushes. So, that's actually most of these sculptures were plush based. I that's kind of was the theme I was going for. I don't think that really hindered, you know, the sales of any of them. I just don't think people were into them, uh, you know, at this convention. But there's Wincap Mario, so that's him. Whoa. Next is Metal Mario. So he's all silver. Kind of hard to see in the camera because he's all silver. Uh, but he's slightly glazed, uh, kind of like the plush, and he's in the plush position as well. So. Um, there's Metal Mario. You know, they're they're pretty good sizes, I would say. You know, mini figure size. Jack specific 2.5 inch figure size or so. Here's Goomba. Right there. And these are, like, signed on the bottom and, like, dated and stuff. So, if you're into, like, my art and you're into L Super Sonic Hue and you, um, I don't want to say you want to invest in my art, but, like, you know, if you want to, like, support me and stuff, um, these are pretty cool because they're totally like, you know, L Supersonic Q, you know, stamped and everything. So, and then Bowser. I really like this Bowser. I think it turned out pretty great. It looks a lot like the plush. So that's really cool. And he has spikes on his shell. So, and it, what's cool as well about this Bowser, I really like the colors on him. They might not be able to show up very well in the camera, but, um, it is like the plush where he's more orangey instead of being like yellow and he has like a green face and like a green shell uh it might be a little hard to see like i said but like you know uh, i think it turned out really good that was probably my favorite from the set honestly unfortunately i actually did sell king bomb i forgot i sold him and um the koopa but if someone wanted like a whole set of those i could sculpt a new koopa and a new king bomb and then sell the whole set if you guys wanted that Next is generic Mario, and this is what blew me away. Like, this Mario, it's just a generic, like, you know, standard-looking Mario. I mean, like, what's, you know, there's nothing, like, overly, like, I don't know. There's, there's nothing different about this. It's just, it's just Mario, but, like, no one wanted it. Um, <laughs> there were a couple of kids that took um, this Mario and this Luigi, and they were like, Play, playing with them like a plush adventure or something like can you not can you not do that um okay so back to this yeah so there's mario just a standard pose mario not really based off of anything but this is luigi so this was actually based off of the mario and wario plush for some, for some reason i decided to base that off of it so there, there's luigi yoshi from from this set sold so that's unfortunate um but here's peach and this is based off of like the Mario Kart uh, SNES plush, if you're wondering why she looks a little weird. My brother absolutely hated this figure, and I'm like, but it looks like the plush. And he's like, no. <laughs> so, that's Peach. These are all in pretty good scale, too. I tried to, tried to scale them as best as I could. So, you know, Mario and Peach. Um, so, I don't have Yoshi. Oh, Toad. I really like Toad. I based him off of the BDNA plush. So he kind of has like, you know, kind of a, a more roundish head. Um, and he's kind of, you know, his face is really simple and stuff. Uh, but I like this toad a lot, actually. He's kind of like, he's kind of in like a sitting pose. 
if you like lay him flat, he's like looking up and sitting. So it's actually a really cool toad. I really like that toad. Believe that was it for the oh yes. No. No. That was not it for the Santa Mario set. Uh Galumba actually goes to that set as well. So here's Galumba. Not really sure why I decided to go for Galumba. Probably because there was already a Goomba in the Mario 64 I said, and I didn't want to do like another Goomba. Because I also, when I do sculptures and con conventions and stuff, I don't like having multiples of the same exact thing. Even if that meant like 64 Goomba and like modern Goomba, I still would have liked, you know, two different looking Goombas. So that's what these are. The next set is um, Pokemon, I guess. A lot of the Pokemon stuff sold, so these are this is hardly a set anymore, but Pikachu, this, so many times people picked this up and they were almost going to buy it, and they didn't. I almost feel bad uh, because there is this one girl, and she was like a small, like, you know, kid, uh, and she really wanted Pikachu, um, but her dad didn't have enough cash on him, and I said, like, oh, I can hold this aside or whatever. You, you know, can go get more money. No one will buy it or whatever. Um, and then they kind of left and then kind of came back but didn't quite come back to my booth. And the last thing I saw was the girl crying and then leaving. So what I'm assuming happened is the dad couldn't find an ATM and they couldn't buy this. And I feel so bad because I would have given this to her for free if I knew that. But, like, by the time I thought of it, they were already gone. Cause, you know, so I'm just like, oh, like, you know, why the girl's crying for any number of reasons. But it was probably because her dad didn't have enough money to buy this so i feel really bad about that but um here it is pikachu oh these are based off of poke dolls by the way which is why they look kind of chibi and which is why bulbasaur looks like this uh, a lot of people like bulbasaur actually there are quite a few compliments on on that uh i really like this jigglypuff like i i'm it's so good i'm like if I could keep one character, or if I wanted to keep one character from every set for myself, this Jigglypuff would be, like, the one from the Pokemon set. So, that's pretty cool. These are smaller than the Mario ones. Uh, here's Squirtle. He's got his tail in the back. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why I said that, why I said that but there's Squirtle. And then, um, Mewtwo... Charizard, Charmander, Venusaur, and Blastoise all sold from that set. If anybody wants any of those, I do commissions too. If anyone wants any commissions, I'll do that too. But like, these are kind of, you know, what I can get right out to you guys. And, you know, kind of have a bit of history to them because, you know, they're conventions and they're based off plushes and all that stuff. Uh, and I just have this blue Blastoise from like um, some other art convention, not Comic-Con, but some other thing from um, last year. Uh, it's really dark, but it's, it's all blue. I did a set of, like, all blue Blastoise, all red Charizard, like, red and blue version. The Charizard sold, but the Blastoise, just no one has cared about. So that's this. Um, all right. I guess I'll show these. They don't really go to a set because they're just kind of old stuff. Tales from, I think, Comic-Con of last year. Um, and I actually, Tales Chow, who I think I... I think I made this to sell, not necessarily at Comic-Con. I think it was just for Etsy, but I guess he was at Comic-Con now. And actually, Knight's Chow did sell um, from this set. I had a Knight's Chow. I have no idea why, guys. Why did someone want a Knight's Chow and recognize what it was? Because I talked to the person who bought it and stuff. I'm like, do you know that's a Knight's Chow? And then they're like, yeah, I remember playing the Chow Guard and stuff. And I'm like, what? In what universe does Knight's Chow sell? And Pikachu remained on my table for the whole day. So that's these two. The next set is actually a set. It's uh, Mario Galaxy. So first off is, whoa, Flying Luigi. Kind of like Flying Mario, um, except not as tall. So there's Flying Luigi in the flesh, or the clay, rather. This is... Ice Mario. And see, I really tried to get, like, super diverse with Galaxy, because Galaxy was one of the last play sets that I, like, compiled. So I didn't just want another Mario, another Luigi. I really wanted diversity. So Ice Mario and Flying Luigi, you're not going to get those two characters in any other game. So Ice Mario. Luma. Black Luma. Pretty cool. Wow, I just realized how stupid that, like... I see, <laughs> when I have audio, I can, like, head nod to myself like yeah yeah but like when i have video it's like 
it looks kind of stupid. So there's Luma. Um, Boom Mario sold from that set. And I guess he kind of came off his base, um, but he was Purple Toad. I, to, I could glue the base back on, but there's Purple Toad. Actually, he was originally supposed to go to the generic Mario set, but then I'm like, he doesn't look like a UFO plush. This looks like more like a UFO plush. So. Um, and then these were kind of the deluxe models. The only one that sold from this was the Luigi with the flashlight and the ghost. So um, these are what I have left of that. And it's not really a set. It's just kind of like old stuff. I'll kind of speed this along in case you guys are getting bored. Um, I can't show that. Kind of, kind of broke. Yeah. Um, Red Yoshi, just a kind of a generic Red Yoshi. He went to a larger set from a couple of years ago. All the other Yoshis have sold except this guy. Um, oh, the meme himself. Uh, Mario Party 5 Luigi, but he's unpainted. He's a prototype. Because I was going to do a set um, last year and sell them on eBay of clay figures. Uh, or, no, clay plushes. I made a Super Sonic that went to Mario Mario 64646464 uh, for like a dollar because no one wanted it except him. And I started bidding way too low. Um, so I was going to do a Luigi. That never happened. And I'm like, I'm not going to bother painting him. So if anyone wants a prototype Mario Party 5 Luigi clay plush with the tag and the gold string. This is a gold string. I got you. And then finally, for the clay... Um, this is kind of an, an odd sculpture because this Yoshi was from Comic Con last year. He went to the original Mario 64 set, but no one wanted him. Um, so I decided how, I, how can I make him better and you know get him to sell like now? Uh, so I decided to put Mario on his back because okay, Mario and Yoshi that makes sense. And I think originally this was going to be like a Mario 64 kind of thing going on because you know Yoshi 64. But then I decided no, this looks more like the Mario World game box art. So then I put a cape on Mario and decided it was a Mario World sculpture, so, um, yeah, this exists. So that was it for the sculptures. Um, like I said, I'll speed this along. I have some paintings if you guys want to. Actually, they might be really glary and stuff. Um, maybe I can take them out of the frames. I'll take them out of the frames and just show you guys the raw painting, so I, we don't get glares from the frames. But I want to show you guys. This is a Sonic, um, like acrylic background kind of you know sketchy whatever this is like whatever um from a few years or a couple years ago so this exists ow crap that hurt all right this stuff is the last stuff sorry if you guys are getting really bored um but i just want to show you guys some of this stuff because plus i didn't do any videos showcasing it so i guess this is my showcase video this is like a, a print like a or a digital art thing that i did uh kind of the classic sonic running with like some sonic text, you know, whatever. So, that. This is Dreamcast era Knuckles. Again, a print that I did digitally. Well, that almost fell on all my clay. So that's that. Uh, these are the really impressive things, though. And I am... I'm surprised, but I'm also not surprised that these didn't sell. Sonic Adventure 2 Super Shadow. Um, the quality is not doing this justice, but trust me, it looks really good. I can get you like high-res scans if you want, or like a, just a better picture. But uh, Super Shadow from SA2, and then definitely the best painting that I had, and definitely my favorite, was Keck Rock. No, I'm kidding. Oh, jeez. Supersonic with soap shoes from SA2 in space, like doing his thing. So. so that was all the real art. Finally, one last final thing, then we'll move on from this in case anyone's getting bored. One last final thing I have to show. If you guys are truly into collectibles and truly into L Supersonic Q or an AR bleh, and are a true L Supersonic Q fan, then you might want to pick up the L Supersonic Q video sampler. So pretty much what this is, and yeah, you might think it's stupid or dumb or whatever because hey i can go on youtube and watch all your videos for free but you know other channels do dvd releases and stuff and it's kind of like um with bands and cds and stuff um you know you can buy the c you, you couldn't just pirate all the stuff online or you can buy the cd or whatever or you maybe you just want these videos to watch i don't know on a tv or something anyway what this is 
it's a compilation of some of my what I consider my better videos. Um, it's the Mario 64. Here, I'll just show you guys. The Mario 64 uh, clay sculpture, the mystery of Sonic 1 prototype, uh, late 90s, early 2000s gaming hoaxes, clay models 11, and the then and now Sonic tribute video thing. And it has nice disc art right there. And this is like the inside insert. And this is uh, the front cover. So um, I have a few of these that if anyone wanted, then you can like, yeah, I'll send you one or whatever because cool stuff. And it's collectible and that's that. Oh, here's my nice, here's advanced shoebox I was talking about. Check it out. Good stuff. So with that said, that's all the stuff I had to show. Um, if any of you guys want that, any of that stuff, message me. It, it is going to go on Etsy, like I said, or eBay or something. I'm going to try and sell it. But if any of you guys specifically want something before I list it to the world, then let me know and we'll work something out. And I also can do commissions if you want. It's just those take a lot longer and they're like a lot. I mean, I still do them, but like they'll take longer. If you just want like, if you're going to commission me for like a Wing Cap Mario, then like, Okay, I can't find it and make a joke right here. I'm going to say, if you want to commission me for Wingcap Mario, then you should just buy this one because here it is, and you'll get it like right now, whereas the commission would take me a lot longer to do. But it's up to you guys. Nice. I freaking wrinkled the shadow. Good thing that's a print. <laughs> anyway, so with that said, guys, thanks for watching this art showcase. And um, I guess we're going to move on to actual topics now, but I'm taking face cam off because I just wanted to show that stuff. So face cam is going away right now. Okay, so with that out of the way, we're going to move on to topics. Now that my DS is on red, it's probably going to die soon. Oh, I wrote all the topics in the description, or the title. Okay, so the first topic we're going to talk about is lost media style. I hope you guys are in the... In, 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 I want to say, like, interested and enjoyed three times in a row, and I failed all the times. Okay, so Kappa Mikey. The Kappa Mikey... Okay. For people who don't know what Kappa Mikey is, Kappa Mikey is a... Like, Nickelodeon TV show from the mid-2000s or whatever. Uh, that was... It's pretty obscure. It only ran for a couple seasons or whatever, and hey, it is what it is. But the more important thing is that way back in 2004, before it was a Nicktoon show, it became an MTV pilot, a pitch pilot that was pitched to uh, MTV. So, the thing with that is that I've been, I've been searching for that for a really long time, the MTV pitch pilot, because, you know, the, the creator doesn't have this early version of the show. The director doesn't have it. All these people don't have it. It's been a crazy wild goose chase. There's actually been a bit of updates to the Kappa Mikey pilot. And it's just so cool how you can really kind of find yourself, um, you know, connected to a fandom or, to, you know, to certain people just by posting a random video. And, well, not that the Mikey video was random. I, I've been wanting to do it, but, like, uh, pretty much, I met this cool guy. He's one of the admins of the last me. Uh, pfft, nah. One of the admins of the Kappa Mikey Reddit, and we started talking and stuff. And uh, obviously, I was worried that the pilot didn't exist anymore. But he can confirm that he has a contact that does have the pilot on VHS tape, and they were looking to get it digital or digitized. And I was curious about this. I said, "Well, how long has has that been?" Because you know, I've heard of people getting stuff digitized and it's taken like, you know, years and they still haven't done it. And he said that it's a, he, they only started talking about it because of my video. So my video has sparked this guy to realize, hey, I have this on tape. Let me try and get it out there. So we actually have some hope in this pilot being found. And it's definitely not lost forever, which is a really, really good thing. Additionally, I've contacted some extra staff from the time of that video uh, most of them haven't gotten back to me, but the comment guy or the Reddit guy informed me that if one person has it, it's likely more people have it and we just haven't found them yet. Additionally, the pilot also was not only on VHS, but it had a digital version that was available on certain like websites of the crew and like 
I think he said like Nicktoons website and stuff back in the day. Not sure how exactly reliable the Nicktoons thing is. Or maybe he was talking about a rumored second Lost pilot that's just more like a variation of the first episode. Um, but for the actual MTV pilot, yeah, um, apparently it was on other sites back in the day. So even if we do get the VHS rip online, I'm going to consider that a win. So I'm not like, you know, I'm not worried about finding the, the high quality version. But to some extent, there is an additional search, you could argue, for that high quality digital version. Um, but some other interesting things is that I guess there was a um, a Kappa Mikey um, AMA on the Reddit with Andrew Kaiko, who I mentioned in my video. And I actually asked him a couple of questions. And one of the more interesting questions I asked him was, of course, it had to do with the pilot. It was, how did exactly did he see the pilot? Because I guess I don't really know how I imagine people had copies of it or anything like I guess I just thought that Larry and the director Larry Schwartz the creator and the director just sat down one day um and said hey MTV we're gonna make you a show and MTV's like okay and they just put them together and just showed MTV like you know like that's what I imagined but I guess it's not exactly like that one day Andrew recalled um the animation collective studio was like at lunch break and for no reason I, I don't really know why, but they just watched the pilot. The whole crew watched the pilot. Like they just had it and they, and they watched it. And I'm like, wow, that's like pretty interesting that like, you know, the whole crew has seen it. It's not just some exclusive, like, like a Andrew didn't just like, cause in the video I originally said that Andrew probably saw it to use his reference for work on the show. Like, no, that, he said that by the time he got on the crew, everything had already been done in regards to assets for the Nicktoons show. So it had nothing to do with MTV in regards to that. Just the entire cast and crew saw it one day at lunch break. Like, how sick is that? Like, what the heck? Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And he also started talking. I asked him another question about Animation Collective and how they folded as a company um, because they no longer exist. And it's kind of sad the way they went out. Uh, quite interesting. The gist of it is Animation Collective is just a small, you know, company as as it was, um, hiring kind of whoever they could. Uh, very strange things happened at around the time that Mikey died um, because anime, it was actually, coincidentally, it was, the year was 2008, Cap Mike had its last season. I, I, I think that's probably when it died. That was the same year Tsunami went off the air, aka anime was dying, and Mikey was an outdated show that used outdated jokes, um, and it just wasn't, wasn't on at the right time. Additionally, uh, New York stuff, because I think he also mentioned, Andrew, that it was around the time of like the, the recession. So uh, rates in New York's for like these studios were just through the roof. And um, with, you know, Kappa Mikey, Animation Collective's biggest show, you know, stopping production, that put a real stake in, you know, their, their plans. So they pretty much had no other choice but to fold. And I think Andrew said that he... Um, worked with them for a couple of years afterwards um trying to you know support the the company uh, but it was just too late and they just died and the rights were sold off to handmade films which i guess is actually not even in good shape themselves but when you make planet 51 as a movie i mean what do you expect so yeah, that's kind of the story with Kappa Mikey and, and Animation Collective. As a whole, Animation Collective is really interesting to me. Um, maybe someday in the video, in the future, I'll do like a video about it or something. Um, but I don't know. It's just the, the Kappa Mikey is still really, really strange to me. Just like everything about it, like its timing, its creation, its development, its death, as well as Animation Collective in all those regards. So, um, pretty cool stuff on the front of of that. But we're going to move on to another Lost Media topic now, and that's JBVO. So some interesting, well, I guess, okay, JB, JBVO, for anyone who hasn't heard about it, is a car, it was an old Cartoon Network block that aired Sunday nights. Johnny Bravo was the host, and the whole idea behind this block was to get viewers to interact with a cartoon character. So what they would do is call into the show. Uh, Johnny Bravo would, like, make comments, you know, about, like, real-world things. Um, I think it was pre-recorded to an extent, like I assume, cause obviously 
they had to record lines for Johnny and stuff. So, like, I don't think the the voice actor for him was just, um, you know, going on the fly, like on the spot in live TV. Especially if like some kid called in and was a wise guy, you know, they couldn't have that on live TV on Cartoon Network. So I think it was probably done like a week in advance, and then they would air it on that Sunday. But if, it was supposed to be a live show that you know, and it had live people calling in. Um, but the thing with that in the, the video I'm talking about is my mystery video regarding it because aside from the fact that the show is so obscure to begin with because a lot of the episodes haven't been saved because it was a you know a weekly timely dated show and people weren't thinking about saving that kind of thing back then. And you know, who who would have thought that Cartoon Network wasn't gonna re-air it anyway? So it's it's quite strange how over the sixty speculative episodes that exist we've only found you know one and a half that's really crazy so i guess as a psa if any of you guys have old vhs tapes or you know you taped cartoon network back in the day check those tapes because any kind of jbvo stuff would be great to find uh, it kind of sucks that we only have one episode from it um because it just you know it's lost media it'd be cool to have more of it to document the series and stuff Cartoon Network probably has it at their archives, but like they're not gonna release it. Like, don't even count on that. So, um, that's interesting in itself. And then the second mystery regarding it was more so directed at one of the episodes that featured a Dragon Ball Z episode. So you could only request like ten minute cartoon cartoons when the viewers called in. Uh, but allegedly, some girl requested a Dragon Ball Z episode. So Johnny Bravo sped through it and. Gave some funny commentary over the you know the fast forwarded episode, so that's obviously lost along with like the entirety of the series or whatever. Um, but that I would say is more of urgent thing to kind of try and get found than just general episodes because that was quite the event and a lot of people seem to remember it and it hasn't been documented anywhere aside from just recollections. We can't prove it exists. I mean, like I, I believe it exists. I'm like because obviously, like that's like. That's something that, like, obviously didn't come out of thin air. At least I don't, like, think it did. Like, I can't imagine someone being like, oh, yeah, remember that fast forward episode on JBVO? Like, why even troll about JBVO? Whereas Kablam was, like, a decently popular, you know, Cartoon Network show, whatever. Uh, so faking Kablam episodes is quite different than faking JB JBVO stuff. So I do agree that JBVO probably did have a Dragon Ball segment, but it's odd to think that there isn't any proof, any technical proof. Um, along the same lines, while my theory does make sense about what episode he showed, which I said was probably a Frieza arc, and I believe I read that somewhere, it's kind of strange how just mentioning that in the video spawned all these comments of people, you know, pinpointing different Frieza episodes in the Frieza arc. And it's like, you know, if I said it was like the Garlic Jr. saga or something, would people have said, oh yeah, it was it was that? Or like, you know, like I'm curious if that's like another one of those Mandela effect things where it's, you know, where it's like just because people are hearing it, they're kind of thinking that. Or if like these people legitimately recall a Dragon Ball Z, um, like, you know, Frieza episode that was fast forwarded through. So that's another thing. <coughs> To consider, um, it, wow, whoa, <clears throat> in regards to um, JBVO. But yeah, get, get the search going on that if you guys can. Really, it's limited to VHS tapes that people have. I know at one point I checked through all my VHS tapes for, what the heck was I even looking for? I forget what I was looking for, but I was looking for something I know. Um, Man, I, I really don't remember what it was. But I didn't find it, so I, I know I don't have it. I want to say more VHS tapes I don't know about. But if any of you guys have VHS tapes, uh, check those because they might have Dragon Ball Z. So, another lost media topic. <laughs> this is kind of like the triple threat video because Mikey, JBVO, and then Kelly Toy. Um. Yeah, um, the, the the longer, or the third part of this trilogy, I, I'm like really, really, really tired. Um, the third part of this trilogy is 
the Kelly Toy Chow plush. So this is interesting because, well, I guess for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Kelly Toy made Mario and Sonic plushes. They were like arcade prizes, carnival prizes. They kind of low quality. No one really cares about them. They're really cheap. If anyone tells you that a Kelly Toy plush is rare, they're lying. So, um, anyway, there was a picture that showed up, allegedly sourced back from 4chan. I have no idea why this picture would have been on 4chan. It was allegedly on the uh, cartoons and comics board. So maybe someone from Kelly Toy just took a picture of it and decided to leak it to be like, hey, guys, look at what's coming up from Kelly Toy most of which never came out because it was mostly highlighting the Cartoon Network Chowder and Flapjack plushes, which didn't come out. But in that same picture is a Cheese the Chow plush. And this is amazing because it shouldn't be in that picture. Someone messed up because either they thought Cheese belonged with the Chowder plushes because of the food name, or Cheese was close to the Cheese from Foster's Home because of the same name, or Cheese is blue like Bubby and Mung Doll. Any number of things could have happened, but all that matters is that it's in that picture and we know it exists and was planned which is really interesting because it makes you think about what other kelly toy plushes exist that we don't know about like the metallic sonic and, and um uh sonic and, and tails we didn't know about those until they surfaced on you know ebay so how many other kelly toy things could be out there that we don't know about it's so interesting to to kind of consider that especially with how like dumb kelly toy is like as I said in the video, we only care about them because they just made, like, Mario and Sonic plushes. And they're not even that good, but, like, you know, that's that's their only claim to fame. And they're just, like, Kelly toy. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, like how? Why? So that's pretty amazing uh, to me because I didn't expect Kelly toy to have such a cool, like, lost, lost plush. And it also makes you, you know, think about... I don't know. I guess just, I guess just like Kelly Toy is like a whole, and like, I don't know. I guess like why they thought of that, how it was shot down. Okay, Sega shot it down, but like, all of the circumstances at the time. If we had seen it earlier, uh, would we have actually had it released, or would Sega have just said no, regardless? You know, if it did release, would we have seen a whole wave of Chows, different variants, or something? Like, I don't know. It's it's really really interesting to think about, and. I hope that it resurfaces someday. I hope I hope I can own it one day. But, I mean, whether or not it still exists remains to be seen. I hope my video... Because even just, like, an in-hand picture... See, it's funny, because, like, before we just had the catalog scans of the Chowder and Flapjack stuff. And I'm like, oh, man. I've never... Like, these don't exist in-hand. And then a picture showed up. But now it's almost like, oh, man... The, like the in hand picture shows up, but I want to know where they are now. So hopefully, if someone like sees the video, they can maybe post a picture if they have them or sell them to me or something. Because that'd be really cool just to know where they are and stuff. Because I, the more and more I collect, the more and more I feel like part of it is uh, preservation and stuff. And if those plushes don't exist anymore, that's going to be really sad because there's like going to be no other Kelly Toy Chow plush ever. You know, because Kelly Toy doesn't even have the Sonic license anymore, so hopefully they can resurface safe and sound one day. But that remains to be seen. Uh, some of my stuff, kind of going back to like the Cap and Mikey video, within you know what was it? Uh, like like days, uh, they, they were saying that they were going to get it digitized and that like someone had it. The Kelly Toy Fire Mario video was at like ten thousand views, and nothing has come from that. It's likely a kid could have bought it, maybe because kids buy Kelly Toy stuff all the time. I just don't know what the original listing was, and I cannot find it. So I have no idea if it was called a prototype, if it was called by Kelly Toy's name, um, or anything like that. So that Fire Mario plush is still a mystery. It's still, like, the biggest, I would say, like, um, overarching Kelly Toy mystery. Because if it is a prototype, it could answer a lot of questions. If it is fake it kind of debunks a lot of different theories. So it just depends on what exactly it is. And until we find out for sure, which I don't know how to unless someone comes forward with it, or I can find the old eBay auction, but even back when it was only a couple months old, we couldn't find it. So it must have been like delisted or something. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll never know.
So, huh? Oh, okay. What other? Okay, so Mario Party Five plushes, and then we might end with. with hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip Persona Five. We're gonna have a guest for Persona Five. So until I can get him in here, uh, I'll talk about this. Then we'll get the guest. Then uh, I'll go. I'll go to viewer comments for a little bit. So, because yeah, we we we're, we're just talking about plushes. I guess it kind of all goes together. So, another day or another week, rather, another Mario Party Five plush shenanigan, courtesy of Tokyo Never. Is that their name? Yeah. So it's just not. Well, it's kind of scumbagish, but not really. It's just kind of sad. In my opinion, this is more sad than scumbagish. So, as I've said many times, oh, I just forgot to open GarageBand to record this. I was gonna say this could, could have been a good highlight, but I forgot GarageBand again. Great. So this can't be a highlight now, but it would be a good highlight if it if I could get it separately on the channel. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Yeah, the Mario Party Five plushes. Um. There was a $10,000 Mario Party 5 Mario plush listing, or bidding rather, that ended a couple weeks ago for like $10,000. Obviously, it did not sell for that much, and the seller has had a huge you know, struggle uh, trying to relist it and resell it and stuff. It's a buy it now 300 which is crazy overpriced, um, but I mean, after the whole 10000 shenanigans, I mean, you know, what are they going to do? Although at the same time... I don't know, like, maybe not listing it for that much money would be a good idea. But whatever. Anyway, so obviously the plush market on those is really, really bad. Well, guess what? This is now rippling into other sellers and it's causing a bandwagon effect. So essentially what's happening here is uh, there was a seller named Tokyo Never or whatever. And I think what happened is they saw how much the $10,000 Mario Party 5 Mario went for, as well as like the Luigi and like the $90 Peach, which is a recurring issue. I don't know why. So they decided, hey, let's go out of our way to try and collect the whole Mario Party 5 set and list them for those same prices, those absurd buy it now prices. So they had a $184 Mario Party 5 Mario that sold, a $388 Luigi, or around there, $350 maybe. And then a ninety dollar peach, which is a direct you know copycat of the of the other ninety dollar peach listing, which you know confirms that this is a copycat kind of deal. And I just think it's so dumb because they did this like day after day after day. First was Mario, then was Luigi, then was Peach, and the prices reflect that of what Dot Japan sells Luigi for, and what that like one seller that has um like like i said the 90 dollar peach it's like a direct copycat of those and it's just sad that they're going out of their way to get the whole set to like flip them for this much money which in japan you can do re really easily you can flip mario 45 which is so easily in japan because people find them all the time dot japan how did he get all his mar all his luigi's he found them for dirt cheap and you know won them at auctions and stuff just like classic throwback that one freaking auction that i was bidding against him he, I think our, the maximum I put in was like, I, I want to say it was like a hundred, like seventy or something. He went one hundred ninety six. Guess what? He sold it for like three eighty eight. He makes money, you know. I mean, it's so easy to do. Although in this circumstance, I would assume that, you know, like they're not being bought for that much money in Japan. Um, but you know, they're still being sold for just as much as you know the scalpers and stuff on eBay. And it's like. It's just so sad how an entire plush set can get so destroyed as that. That, like, I don't know. That, like, no normal collector can afford any of them. And that we see a copycat seller. Like, is this going to be a new thing? Or, or is every single Mario Party 5 Peach going to be $90 now? Are more Japanese sellers going to go out of their way to get them? Is this going to actually make... The Mario Party 5 plushes rare because honestly, they're not even, they're really not rare. Really, they're not. If you search like, you know, hard enough, you can find them. 
It's not like the RPG plushes and the 64 plushes where, like, no matter how much you search, they're just going to show themselves in time. You can find Mario Party 5 Mario plushes, like, pretty easily, honestly. Especially on, like, a week-to-week basis. Um, I mean, th- there's one up right now for $9 on a Japanese auction site. So it's just dumb how, you know, people do this. And I kind of want to, like, again, like, like relay this to, to you guys. And stuff. By not supporting these people, you know, you really harm their business. I mean, just since we started doing these streams and we started calling out Japan, which I'll do every single stream if I have to, because they're scumbag reselling scalpers. Just from the time we started doing that, I think like 10 of you guys have said you stopped buying from them, which is good. That's, you know, 10 less profits they make, which hurts their, you know, scalping reselling business, which is good for the collecting community. I mean, I honestly, I don't know if it's just because I, I don't know if it's just because I, I, I don't really, uh, go out of my way to find other like streams that talk about collectibles or other, you know, people that talk about collectibles in the same way I do, or really talk about this, I guess, in a general kind of way on the internet. But like scalping as a whole and stuff like, and all of this, like, you know, eBay, like I, eBay is just one of the worst sites to go on for me because it just, once I found out what people were doing, it was so toxic. They're literally false gods, as Pat Mac kind of panned. Nashiko Dot Japan is a false god to all these little kids who think they're the greatest seller in the world because they had a Mario Party 5 Luigi plush. Guys, Mario Party 5 Luigi plushes are not even rare. They're just uncommon, and they don't pop very much. The only reason why they're rare is because of how expensive they are, so less and less people can get their hands on them, which is done, of course, by scalpers. So... I knew this was going to circle back to just a general scalper rant, but, like, you guys got, like, when you can, don't support scalpers, speak out against scalpers, because I have a real issue with it, and I just, I was talking about this with my, with my friends not too long ago, and I'm not going to, like, call it, like, shout out names and stuff right now, <laughs> aside from Dodger Pan, like, they, they get, they get the sick shout out for the week, but, like, scalping and that kind of stuff should not be accepted, okay, at least, okay, in my collectible community it's not accepted so um you know i don't think you guys should accept it either because it only makes it harder for you guys to get stuff and it puts money in the hands of people that really don't deserve it like i said i mean you know and i'm trying to think how to like say this in a generic kind of way I don't want anybody to say like, oh, well, well, you're just being selfish that, you know, you're going to use this example that you didn't, that you didn't win this Mario Party 5 auction. You know, the one I'm going to talk about right now, the one that I woke up at like 730 on like a Sunday to go and, you know, use my proxy and place bids for Mario Mario 64 to get one of the last plushes in mint condition he needed to complete his plush that which he's been collecting for years. Okay why is it that $200 was not enough to buy Mario Party 5 Luigi for this collector to complete his set? And instead, Japan outbid me at more than $200 and flipped it for $388 or whatever they're selling it for. How is that, how is that acceptable in a collectible community? Because it just, not only does it show like disrespect to the collectibles, and honestly, if you, if like, if people have problems with like, Oh, they're because I've seen this a lot. They're just stuffed animals. You know, don't call them, you know, you know, important pieces of memorabilia. Like, if that's how you feel about co- video game collectibles, maybe you shouldn't be collecting video game stuff because that's what people do is they view them as these holy grails for a reason. You know, Mario RPG Yoshi is a holy grail for a reason. It means something to the people that want it. It's not just a stuffed animal. So I don't know. It's a really complicated thing. Maybe at some point we should have just a whole stream talking about scalpers and like all kinds of issues with the collectible community because there are quite a few I can name off the top of my head and stuff like that. But for now, I think that kind of is a good place to probably end it. Um, well, I mean, end the topic. I still have more to do. With that said, um, 
the last topic we're going to talk about before I go to comments is going to be Persona 5. Because it's actually interesting, it does relate to Nintendo, but we're going to get a guest on to do that. Um, and also, I'm going to go get a drink so I don't completely die. So maybe like minute intermission, minute, minute and a half intermission, um, and then I'll be back. All right, so I'm back, and our special guest tonight is the one and only, not L Supersonic Q. Hello. So he's here, and he's gonna help me talk about Persona Five because he played it, and he has, a, you know, probably some opinions about it. I have some opinions too. Um, so we'll get going on that. All right. So where do I begin? Um. I would start by saying that the game has really surprised me on how excellent it is, but I don't want to say that because it shouldn't come as a surprise. Um, I started playing the Persona games uh, maybe about three years ago. I started with Persona 4. Uh, that's the one that really got me into it. Um, and, I mean, Persona 4, um, I've played 2, 3, and 4. Persona 4 is probably my favorite maybe I'm a little biased because it's the game that got me started on it on the series but I think Persona 5 takes everything great about the Persona games Persona 4 and just you know makes it makes it even better uh, takes the series even further in the right direction um, I mean really I mean just as as soon as the game starts it's just uh, L Super Sonic Q can also attest to um, its greatness, but the visuals and uh, the and, and the story, the story is just like I'm not. I won't spoil too much in case uh, you know someone wants to like play it. But I mean, it, it from the get go, it really felt like a really solid, unique installment. Um, they didn't just reuse you know an, an old an old storyline or an old plot line i was really really impressed by how unique and original the first segment of the game was um so that's really cool i since i'm a hardcore uh, rpg player i'm i decided to play on uh, the merciless difficulty which is free dlc that adds an even harder difficulty. Uh, I've, I'm pretty well. Um, my sk my skills are pretty well developed with uh, JRPGs and uh, the Shin Megami Tensei series. So I decided to go mer merciless, and I will admit that uh, it is very hard. Um, I have died so many times. Um, it really, you if you know anything about the Persona gameplay. 
you really have to execute your turns uh, really precisely and make sure you don't make any mistakes. It, it is really hard. Uh, and right now I'm on the, uh, the boss segment of the first chapter and, you know, RNG is just so crucial. Um, I, I, sometimes I have pretty flawless runs and then I'll, and then, you know, the boss will just sc screw me over in the end and it can get really frustrating. Um, but I think it's really fun. It's really great. Um, and, and visually, I mean, it's even one, I, I know in uh, Japan, it was given pretty high praise for, um, it's, uh, the system interface, the, I forget exactly what they call it, but like the, the user system interface, um, pretty much just graphically, um, how all the menus look, how all the graphics look. It even won some, uh, like PlayStation, PlayStation awards. So yeah, I mean, I think Persona 5 really put Atlas on a new level of, uh, popularity and overall greatness of the company and they're like expanding and they have some they got some new uh, departments where they're developing some new games so i think persona 5 uh really solidified atlas once more in the rpg genre and even if you're not familiar with the series i highly suggest that you give it a try because um i think it's a really great installment for people to uh, get into the series if they haven't prior. So that's my take on it. And I was also fortunate to uh, get the limited edition pre-order deluxe box. I usually pre-order my games really early before they come out. And uh, unfortunately, you can't really get it anymore. I'm sure it's being, I, I've seen it being not scalped terribly on eBay, but scalped to the point where it's, you know, thirty forty dollars higher than retail so that's pretty unfortunate uh definitely not as bad as the fire emblem uh fire emblem fates deluxe which you know was scalped i don't know like you know at least a hundred dollars if not more uh more than the msrp so that's pretty unfortunate but yeah i'd say give it a, give it a try i i really like it and this is kind of the uh, part of what not a supersonic you had to say is kind of the importance that I want to talk about. Like from a fan perspective, he really likes the game, obviously, but what's interesting that I noticed is because I've been watching him play and stuff is that I like the game and I don't really have that much of a connection to the persona series. And I don't like RPGs or JRPGs or whatever. So that actually brings up a point, And this is kind of where it connects to Nintendo is that like, Persona 5, like, literally did everything right from, as not as Sonic you mentioned, like, story to gameplay to menu interface. The game is very stylish, and it looks really, really good. And that almost got, I was almost jealous when he played it for the first time because, like, he's been waiting for this game ever since it was, like, announced and stuff. And, like, now he's finally playing it, and it looks great. And I'm just like, man, like, what the heck? Like, why can't I play a game that, like, looks that good? Now, you know, I was that excited about. And it got me thinking that, like, Nintendo has really dropped the ball, as we all know. But, like, like, I want games like Persona 5 from Nintendo. And this is the thing. Because I was thinking about this. I was going to say, when was the last game we really got? Or when was the last time we got, like, a really big hype game or whatever from, like, Nintendo and stuff? And, like... I mean, I was excited about Smash Bros, but, like, okay, it's, like, Smash Bros, whatever. And, like, the only thing I could think of was, like, as far back as, like, the Wii generation or something with, like, Galaxy. I guess Odyssey now, but, I mean, I don't know, like... And, I mean, you now you can say that Zelda is that newest stylish, like, highly acclaimed game. So, I mean, you can consider that, but... Well, this is, this is my... And maybe you can even consider Star no, I mean, no. you don't consider. I don't know how many people consider Star, but um, well, this is the, okay. This is the thing with that. I mean, first off, Star Fox, no, because that gives everything wrong. Like the, that's like the polar opposite of Persona Five. But the thing with Breath of the Wild, and because yeah, you could argue that Breath of the Wild is, uh, you know, is that is the Persona Five of Nintendo. But the thing with me, and this might just be me personally, 
is that I am only interested in Breath of the Wild because it's Zelda. If that was like Shadow of the Colossus 3 or something, it would look boring. It would look spacious, empty, like, you know, nothing. Whereas Persona 5, I don't even like the Persona series, but that game is a game I want to play. You know what I'm saying? So I almost feel like, and maybe I'm stating the obvious by saying this, Nintendo, like, is only Nintendo because they're Nintendo. And I almost really feel like that's a bad thing. I want really elaborate stories and complex, you know, gameplay mechanics and, like, really elaborate, like, nice-looking menus and stuff in my, you know, in my gameplay and stuff. Like, the Starbucks Zero menu, you hit the pause button, it says, like, mission, you know, quit start, or no, not quit start, what, um, restart, quit, or menu. I don't know, it's just, it's really boring, it's really mundane. Like, I'm even thinking back to, like, um, I'm trying to think of like other Wii U games or other like I don't even like have any like Wii U games really. Um, but I, I I feel like everything about Nintendo, in my opinion, at least within recent times, because this is what I'm again judging them on because it's recent times. It's just very basic, very like bland, very like I said, status quo Nintendo. But I don't want that. I think I'm tired of that. I want like a really good looking game like Persona 5 from Nintendo. Like, I mean, I'm not sure if you could really do it with Metroid, but you could write a really, really stunning narrative with Metroid. And, you know, you could make really complex, like, menu designs. Like, in Persona 5, there's a weapon shop. And honestly, the weapon shop is something I could see in, like, a Metroid game with the amount of, like, uh, green and, like, grid-based, you know, um, visuals and, like, little details of like things you they didn't even need to add in like um their like dog tags of like the characters names and behind the name is a lighter print of like what the like arc what they're called what their arcana class is oh hmm. right yeah. They, yeah yeah or is that right yeah 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 and it's like they didn't even need to add that but it makes it look so much better so like i could see you know some kind of advanced thing like that in a metroid game um so i just think it's something that Nintendo, like, at least for in my opinion, really needs to take into consideration in the future is that I want to see something better, especially with the Wii U. I don't want to just see, you know, status quo Nintendo, like, you know, like, you, you know, mean with the Switch or with the Wii U? What did I say? You said Wii U. Oh, I meant, yeah, I okay. didn't know if you meant Switch. No, I meant, I meant, yeah, I meant Switch. Like, I, I want to see something bigger and better. I want to see something like, like, if they made like Mother 3. Or no, okay, not Mother, I guess it would be Mother 4. They made Mother 4, and it was like Persona 5 in the... Okay, not... But the, the, that'd be, that'd be cool. But I mean, like, no, I don't mean... I don't necessarily mean in terms of gameplay or, like, um, like like stylish visuals and, like, you know, like, graffiti art as, like, the Persona art style is. I, I kind of I kind of just mean, like, if they can just do something that makes it stand out from all the other Nintendo games that I've played. Perhaps it may come with... See, I'm just thinking along RPG lines now, but maybe the Fire Emblem Switch game will, like, bring, I maybe like, like I said, I'm just thinking about in terms of RPG. But I was just thinking like, like, uh, because Mother is turn-based, just like 3D model turn-based Mother, like, that'd be cool. And then I was thinking, oh well, it's gonna be a new Fire Emblem game that's gonna be 3D, oh, turn-based. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, okay. but that's an RPG, and you don't really. We no, but wouldn't play that. No, but see, if they can make it just as cool as Persona Five, like in terms of like, in like I said, not so much like the cool graffiti stuff Persona Five has, but just make it really like, you know, like regal and like exceptional and really like wow, that is a stunning visual with whatever, you know, they with whatever tone they kind of want Fire Emblem to have. I feel like that's fine, but like, you know, I'm just thinking about like. Just like, like I said, the Star Fox 64 menu. It's simple text, simple background. There's nothing special there. So, um, did you have any other thoughts about Persona? Well, yeah, just a couple. Um, I mean, I know, like I said, I'm a Persona fanboy, but like, if 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 the game wasn't good, I wouldn't say it was good. For example, I I played two, three, and four. Two. 
two two was good. Like okay, three three and four were just about equally good for me. I enjoyed them both. Two, I enjoyed two. Like I'd say I enjoyed two until about the halfway to three quarter point, and then, um, you know, Persona is known for its like you know strange supernatural phenomena, and all sorts of stuff. But, um, the whole point of Persona two. Sorry if I'm kind of spoiling. It's uh, by the end you're fighting like zombies and Nazis and aliens. That was just way too like supernatural, and I I could not even follow where the story was going and like how all of this was coming together at the end. It really made no sense. So not that it was a bad game, but just I didn't like it as much as I could have had they done things differently. So as much of a Persona fan as I am, if Persona 5 wasn't good, then I would say it's not good because I'm I'm kind of saying that, you know, Persona Persona just because I like Persona doesn't mean doesn't mean I found Persona 2 really. It, it's it's good, but like there were a lot of things wrong with it. Um so if I thought Persona Five was bad, I'd, I'd also say that. But but so but I mean so so far, uh, I'm like, uh, I think I'm about ten, ten, maybe like ten to fifteen hours into it. But um, yeah, I think it's really good. And um, I was also sort of worried with the voice acting because when I played Persona Three and Persona Four, uh, since those games had already been out for a really long time, um, I you know i didn't i didn't even know about the games when they initially came out so i wasn't following like you know whenever a game is announced there's all sorts of japanese footage first and you get accustomed to the japanese voice actors that didn't happen with persona 3 and persona 4 because i hadn't known about them uh previously and the first time i was exposed to them was you know when i bought the games in english and played them so i from so right off the bat i was already used to the uh English voice acting, but since I uh, started following, so and then when I started following Persona and Persona Five was announced, I watched all like these these Japanese teaser uh, footage and trailer gameplay, and then I started becoming accustomed to the Japanese voices. And when Atlas USA would slowly release uh, the first English voice uh, voice cast, I. I was a little skeptical at first because I was like, well, uh, this, I'm not sure if I like this voice because I was so used to the the Japanese ones. But I got to say that even though at first I was worried about some of the voices, it, it's, it's two, they're two completely different things. When you just watch a trailer with voices and random game gameplay clips, and then it's another thing when you're actually playing the game and seeing the character's uh, artwork and in and, and, and game models their mouths move with the words and you see the text boxes on the screen with the words I, I think it's kind of about context like yeah when when I was watching those early uh, English voice voice acting trailers I was I was kind of like worried I was like yeah, I don't think I like this voice but I became accustomed to the English voices really quickly when I played the game because it's all about context like when 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 I'm Im immersed into the game and you see the characters talking, it feels a lot more natural than when you're just watching a trailer and you don't know like where these voice clips are played and what's going on in the scene. So I I, I do also have to say I I do like the voice acting. I I didn't think I would at first because I like I said I had watched all the Japanese things and I was used to all their voices, but now I can't even remember what the Japanese ones sound like and. Uh, I'm accustomed to the English voices, so um, that's another plus for the game, the voice acting. I, I think it's uh, pretty natural. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I didn't like know anything about like the voice, the voices bet between either or games. So, but I, I mean, I think they sound great. Like, I have no complaints. And and Xander Mobis is uh, the protagonist. Yep. The Smash Bros. announcer is the protagonist of Persona Five. That's yeah. That at first, I he, I mean, he, he, you would not even be able to tell because he doesn't have that like the deep voice. He doesn't have that like 
deep, loud voice that he does for announcing characters. Um, and it's kind of funny because now every time I, the, the protagonist uh, says very few words, like most role playing game protagonists, I guess. Um, they're usually silent, but I was afraid at first I, that, um, like, at first, every time he opened his mouth, even though it didn't sound like the Smash announcer, I would always think, oh, he, this is the Smash announcer talking. Like, it's so strange to think about that. But um, I kind of forgotten about that now, and it doesn't even sound like him. But yeah, it's just funny to think about, like, when the Persona 5 protagonist opens his mouth, that's actually the Smash announcer's voice. Like, it's really, there's really two odd things to put together. It, this has to be said now. Do you know if any Persona people are friends with Sakurai? Because if they use the Smash Four announce, if they use Xander for yeah. the Smash Five announcer, they could easily put protagonist into Smash Five. Yeah, I, I, I don't unless it's some sort of like huge publicity stunt for something like like a like a fire, almost like a melee Fire Emblem promotion thing. Um, where they just add in the character to promote a game, I, I honestly don't, don't really. I see. mean, they could do another fighter ballad or something. Yeah, but uh, I mean, yeah, that, well, I, in I, Snake, I in Snake, Snake, Snake was in Brawl, so uh, I mean, I know that. Okay, they were friends, like Kojima, and I would be, it would be definitely would be cool and interesting. I'm not even sure if because, like, I, you know, I like Persona, but like, I'm not sure if I would want that to be integrated with smash for us because then i feel like like I'd, I'd be like playing as him and like i wouldn't really be like it would for me it would be a distraction from play, a distraction from playing as the nintendo characters and mm. uh yeah that'd be an interesting thing i think. i think it would be cool because i i don't know because i see because i because i like the i like the persona characters and the persona like persona three four five and stuff so, like, if I could play as them in a non-RPG setting, like, I'd be down they'd, for that. They'd just be uh, more anime swordsmen, which which no one wants more of. See, actually, okay, I could imagine the Persona 5 protagonist not being a swordsman. I could imagine or him doing project- different... Yeah, you know, like, gun... Or, or, I mean, or just something, so, like, yeah, different. Something. I could feel like he, could, he has more... Uh, more of a, he could have more of a dynamic moveset than, like, yeah, three or four, but... Yeah. I guess with that said, um, does it do for Persona... Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I mean, even, even dungeon exp because the whole point of the game is dungeon exploration. Uh, but I mean, that's, I think, no matter how great I think Persona Five is, and everything like that, I think even when I get done finish uh, playing the game, now I can't say this for certain now, but from right now, I'm gonna say no matter how much I like Persona Five. I think I'm just going to be bi- always biased towards Persona 4 because it's the first one I played and ha- and I have a lot of great memories with it. Um, so Persona 4 might always be my favorite, but that's not to say that uh, Persona 5 is anything less because it's... I mean, game... It's... it's, it's, it's re- because 3 and 4 were on PS2 and... Oh, yeah. P- oh, yeah, PS2. I think it's that's been right. about 10... I think Persona 4 came out in Japan in, in 07. So it's been 10 years since a Persona installment. And it is a huge improvement. Be, I mean, the, you had you have Persona 4 Arena and Persona 4 Ultimax, which I believe are the only the only two Persona games uh, on PlayStation 3. So really, this is the first main install, Persona installment. And technically, if you're still classifying it as Shin Megami Tensei, this is like the the first real Persona slash Shin Megami Tensei installment, like PS3, PS4, current current gen console. So it definitely uh, lives up to its name of uh, you know performance and, and everything. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's my plug in. Go buy the game. And there, and there you have it. By Persona Five from Not El Persona Q. Thanks for stopping by, Not El Persona Q. Oh yeah, uh, and I also, I do also have to say that I was kind of impressed at how much 
uh, American uh, advertisements. I mean, when I went to GameStop a couple of days before buying the game, before it came out, they had they actually had like really big advertisement posters, and you'd go on their website for like a couple of weeks leading up to the release, um, and they they'd have it like huge on the front page of their web on GameStop's website, like Persona Five. So it is kind of just cool to see how how it's almost come from nowhere and like taken the uh, JRP the like JRPG uh like like genre in america by storm like usually you know usually final fantasy is real and that's not even really a jrpg anymore it's more like one of those uh real world like 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 real time based like action i i think where you just like like xenoblade where you like run around uh in the open world and like slash enemies and stuff so i mean final fantasy isn't even really a traditional JRPG anymore. So it's just really cool to see. And hopefully uh, Persona 5 will get, you know, even more recognition in time to come. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just amazed at uh, how much publicity it's already gotten in America. And yeah, that'd be uh, great for more things to come. Like the uh, Switch, Shimagami Tensei. Or did you mean Persona related? Um, I guess both. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Shin Megami Tensei see, Switch. Oh, see, actually, while Nintendo fails with their really cool games, like I mentioned, we'll get Shin Megami Tensei on the, the Switch, and that'll be like that'll be like the game that I'm looking for on Nintendo, and it won't even be by them. Yeah. Like, in terms of, like, quality. Um, and, like, everything I said about, like, story and stuff, so. Well, I guess with that said, um... Is, is that it? Not L Super Sonic U? I believe so. All right. Well, thanks to Not L Super Sonic U for showing up. And it is about nine, so we're pretty much on schedule. I'm not ending the stream here, though. I am going to go to comments for, I say 15 minutes. It'll probably be more like, we'll definitely end by 9 30 because that will have been two hours. But all right, we'll go to 9 30. You guys convinced me. All right. So well, I'll go to comments for half an hour, and at 9 30, we'll call it a night. So I'm going to scroll to the very bottom and see what the comment says. Um, Zenono said, whoa, I said, okay, first I, I saw it, they said Square Enix Switch support. Are, are they not on the switch yet did they not join the switch support huh i thought maybe they did well if they didn't i mean they should get on that but i don't know for sure mr video vgm hail supersonic q i found my uh green geno plush in my closet i posted pics of it and tagged you oh thanks i'll uh, tag me on twitter maybe um oh they are on the support line oh nice all right cool oh yeah, yeah. wasn't there talk about um what was it there? Um, crap, what the heck? Uh, the, the Final Fantasy... Yeah, the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Wasn't there a rumor that, that was going to be on Switch? Because if that is, that would be super great. Because I really want to... Like, watch that. I mean, play it. Why did I say watch? I saw, oh, because you guys are talking about... Lucky Star. I don't know anything about that at, at, at all. Um, Pick of the Gamer played almost every Mario game. Oh, Everything is Awesome Studios got Wind Waker on Wii U. I remember a few weeks ago you said you were going to sew it. Nice, you actually did. That's good. Um, you got to play Wind Waker. Um, and now that you're getting more use out of the Wii U, that's like really good too because my Wii U is like just totally dead. Uh, JTV, I'm not going to do any call-ins tonight. Oh, Mario Mario's plugging the Discord server. Yeah, that's a thing, guys. Ju says, I like your vids. Well, thanks. I'm glad you enjoy. So what I aim to do on YouTube. Oh, John said he changed his mind about the hiatus. Oh, okay. Remember when I talked a really long time ago about the about John's hiatus? 
Yeah, um, pretend that didn't happen, I guess. And Mario found this weird Lost Media article about a Lost game called Mario Knights. I feel like I've heard about that. I'll, I will look it up later. Lemon King said, do you remember me? I do remember you, Lemon King, yeah. John went to Toys R Us. Logan does not have a Switch. Ah, oh, dang, me neither. And then Lish, Lish them, the, 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 I messed that up. Lish Zim, uh, the great, said, Lucky Star is an anime about an otaku. That's all you need to know. Whoa. I guess that makes sense. Ed Mario is getting a Switch for Easter. What the heck? Dude, Easter is not for Switches. It's for, like, chocolate. Um, Beam Blaster 10 said, When did you start YouTube? I started back in 2009. Um, I think I was actually going to go... I think one week I was supposed to go off on a whole origin story with that, and I never really did, but I, I don't want to do a whole long thing now because it would take up like 9,000 minutes. But yeah, back in 2009, because some of my friends were doing it, so I'm like, hey, why can't I do that? And I, that's how I started with my sculptures. Logan said, you make great vids and have inspired me to make my own lost media videos someday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, with the boost in popularity, I guess it's really cool that you know, more people have kind of been inspired to do lost media videos. As long as people can be original with it, then yeah, spread the lost media. Amazing John said, I got 2.5 inch Bokoblin, Skull Kid, Yellow Pikmin, Purple Pikmin. I got 4 inch Toon Link Wave 6, and then Skull Kid, Fox, Slippy Peppy, and Green Paratrooper. Where do you even live or where like you can find those things? Mine is just horrible, my Toys R Us. It's just literally horrible. Pat Mac got Brawl for Easter back in 2008. What the heck? Okay, now that I think about it, I think I did get a couple of games for Easter. But like, I don't know. It was like when I was like really young though. Or I guess maybe you guys are young, maybe. Okay, fine. I guess I guess my point is um moot or whatever. Oh, Caleb says, you're awesome, bro. Thanks. I'd like to think I'm pretty awesome. Whoa. Whoa. Andrew Keiko is here. Oh, man, that's really awesome. Dude, thanks for stopping by. That's, like, really, really cool. Oh, man. Dude, is this, like, the first... Actually, oh, wait. This is, this is the first celebrity on in the chat. I think I think last year though, well, who was that guy? Sonic Paradox? Is he a celebrity? Well, I don't know. Andrew Keiko is a pretty cool dude. So that is amazing. Oh my gosh. That's whoa, that's like really cool. Man, I I'm like it's 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 sinking in. As I seek, it's sinking in like man. That's what I meant earlier when I was talking about the community, about like like posting videos and like interacting with new people in new communities. Like Ever since I posted that Mikey video, like I've just met so many new people and it's just really, really cool that like a video that I just, of a topic that I was interested in just like happened to spark so much. So that's awesome. Um, <laughs> Amazing John, the mystery of. Amazing John IT's Popco review. Yeah, you gotta get that video out, John. It's like been way too long. And James Fat said, I once got $15 for Easter instead of candy because I th I thought I was allergic. <laughs> I mean, you can't complain about money. Like, money is good any time of the year. So that's pretty awesome. Um. Oh, I saw, uh, yeah, Super Saiyan 2 Goku said, I'm kind of scrolling over the comments now. Um, that's kind of how these end up going. It's just like random comment comments here and there. Uh, Super Saiyan 2 Goku said, Hey, Super Sonic, you know, the, what the Spider-Man entered the Electro 9-11 game. What? You know, now that, the, now that you mentioned that, I feel like I've heard about it, but I'm not super into like bootleg lost media games. So I probably will never look into that again. You may you encounter so many great people on chat and Facebook, but stalking is wrong. Well, that's good advice. <laughs> it's really good advice, Andrew. 
everything is awesome said i remember when he showed up yeah that was pretty crazy because like john i think was in the call we were in like a call and someone said like whoa like blue paradox is here and i'm like who and then you guys like blue paradox i'm like yeah i don't know that guy <laughs> that was pretty funny JTV said, who's a celebrity? Andrew Keiko. Um, well, yeah. Uh, Andrew K. Full, I guess. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Keiko from um, Capo Mikey and Animation Collective and stuff. Uh, I mentioned him in my Capo Mikey video. So that's really cool that he, that he showed up. Uh, Piggy the Gamer said, make the mystery of Glover 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know I still have to make that. I just, oh, yeah, I just, like, I don't know. It's, like, one of those things that, like, I want to make, but it's just, it's always, like, I'm never in the mood for it. So, I mean, someday it, it should happen. Uh, Caleb said, do you have an Xbox? I do not have an Xbox to any extent. I only have Nintendo stuff, and, like, my brother has PlayStation, but that's it. So, no Xbox for me. Waffle Co. is going to get a Switch on Sunday because they called Toys R Us. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Uh, I don't have enough money for a Switch, so I will not be able to get it. Lish Zim said, I got StarCraft 2 today. It's pretty good. Never played StarCraft or any MMOs. I only know a little bit about it. I think I used to know someone in high school who played it a little bit. Um, but it's really confusing to me. I'm sure maybe if I sat down and tried to learn it, it wouldn't be. But I don't really have any intentions on learning it, so cannot say that'll happen. James said, have you ever thought about in the future your vids becoming lost so then no one will have <laughs> good references for other lost media? I don't think my videos will ever become lost because I have no plans to like delete them or anything like that. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the funny thing. Um, throw back to like earlier when I was talking about those like uh, promo sampler DVD things I made for Comic-Con. Like, throw back to that, um, one of my friends, because because yeah, it's a video sampler. One of my friends said, El Supersonic, what if once you got those discs out there to your fans, you deleted the videos on your channel that, you know, were on the discs? So then <laughs> the videos become lost media. And I'm like, that's an interesting thought. But, yeah, I don't plan on deleting any of my stuff anytime soon. So... Mario Mario 64 got uh, more super battle bootlegs. Thoughts? Oh. I mean, you're you're in too deep with them that I guess I'm not surprised, but I'm not exactly happy you spent the money on it. <laughs> Amazing John's working on a teaser tra trailer. Well, I missed a ton of comments. <laughs> I'm so bad with comments all the time. It's just it's so recurring. Um. Oh, Bryak said, fuck, uh, pff, oh, <laughs> okay, I was, <laughs> that came out wrong, okay, I thought he said Foxtrot forgot to ask, but I said, like, Fox, but I kind of didn't say the X all the way through, because then I realized you said forgot, so, <sighs> that probably sounded like a naughty word, okay, forgot to ask, how much do your clay models typically, typically cost? Ten bucks, like, yeah, ten bucks, that's, like, or I guess I should say, the ones I showed today, all those would be like 10, uh, but commissions are, are more. And I, I really think um, with my commissions, I, yeah, I, I almost want to say that I, I really feel, because I've, I've been working on some com some commissions that are like really late and stuff, so um, yeah, but I feel like I, I, I really undervalued them to some extent. So if you want a commission, depending on what it is, like I, I, I say this because I want it to look really good and stuff, but like, I want to say commissions. Okay. You guys are going to like it like crazy, but like commissions, I want to like, okay. If you want like a small little like figure, like what I showed 10, $15 and the stuff I showed will be 10, $15. Uh, I got a commission for a Mario RPG Bowser. And I, you know, I like, we already agreed to like 30 bucks or so i i did not realize how difficult it was going to be at the time so i'm not going to jack the price up or anything you know that was my loss but for the future if you wanted like you know like 
a four inch or so like RPG Bowser or something like that, it's going to be like 60 or $70 just because of how much work I had to put into that. And like, you know, larger, more complicated sculptures. Like it looks really, really, really good, but I lost money on it because I spent so much time on it and I didn't realize that it, you know, that it was going to take me that long to do so. Uh, really big ones. I mean, it got to cost you, unfortunately, but that's kind of the way art goes, I guess. Um, Lish them, them, the keeps stumbling over that. Lish Zim said, what's your thoughts on the new Beauty and the Beast remake if you've seen it? I didn't see it, but I, it's actually kind of interesting because I did kind of have some thoughts on it, I guess, some light thoughts. Hmm. I just think it's kind of weird that Disney is just like doing live action movies based on their animated series. I just think that's weird personally. I know they did Cinderella, I think. And this is just kind of another one to add to that list. And they might even have another one in the works. I don't remember. But I just think it's kind of weird that I don't know that, that like they're remaking their animated stuff in live action. Maybe it's just because I'm so against live action to begin with that I don't like it. Cause like whenever I think of live act, like I know the movies are, aren't like cheap or quote unquote cheap, but like, you know, when I think of like live action, I think of like, you know, cartoon network versus CN real. So to this extent, it's like classic Disney animation or the cheap live action remake. You know what I'm saying? So, but I mean, I haven't seen it. I don't really plan to see it. I'm sure it's a good movie, but uh, not really my, my thing. John, I can uh, I can discuss in PM the details of that Yoshi and Mario. Everything is awesome. Got Lego City undercover for the Switch, and eh, not a fan of Lego stuff. Wow, I'm guys. I'm just so bad at comments. Like I'm really bad at comments. Wow, good one, Pat Mac. Big the cat flesh toy prototype from the company Jazzer. Think thoughts. Um. Wow. I think it's uh cool to say the least. Thoughts on Mario Kart 64 Protos? Mario Mario 64? Um cool to say the least. Especially since I own one. Uh JGB said, how much will the sampler DVDs cost? Like five bucks probably, plus like shipping. Shipping should be like two, probably. So seven bucks including shipping. I mean, yeah. Uh, Ed Mario said, what's your favorite GameCube game, L Super Sonic Q? Oh, man. Animal Crossing GameCube, without a doubt. Or I guess that was redundant. I should have just said Animal Crossing. <laughs> We're talking about GameCube. But yeah, Animal Crossing. I think Animal Crossing on GameCube is actually my favorite game of all time. Because uh, I just like it so much. It's just, I can always, like I always said to myself, if there was, if I could only play one game for the rest of eternity, what game would it be? And it would definitely be Animal Crossing GameCube. I could just play that game forever. Even when there's like nothing to do, you could still like make up stuff to do. Like I actually kind of booted it up uh, a week or so ago and I was just like messing around with my house and like, you know, my house is pretty much already as perfect as, as I want it. But like I was still kind of figuring out what I could do with it, different ways to change things. Um, I have a, a, another character that I started that just to use the, um, the little like able sisters patterns with, cause I have signboards with artwork on it in my main character. I used up all his his image space, so I started a second character for more image space like years ago. But I'm thinking about upgrading his house now so I can furnish it and have like a second house. So just the the possibilities are endless. Even after you like, you know, finish the main objective and then really, you know, I guess finish the secondary objectives of like getting what furniture you want and stuff and furnishing your house perfectly. There's always a third objective of just doing whatever you want, just being creative with the game. Super Saiyan 2, Goku said, Hey, Super Sonic, have you ever played Conker's Bad Fur Day? I have not played Conker's Bad Fur Day. It's actually interesting. I had a conversation today with someone at Comic-Con about Conker's Bad Fur Day. I think I mentioned, yeah, I mentioned that a little bit. We talked a little bit about it. Um, so I, I have not played that. I, if I ever get an N64, I wouldn't mind picking it up. Um, but I'm not going to have an Xbox to play it on, and I would rather not play it on emulator.
alternate timeline where Tor Island and Restaris coexisted together. Zenono said, "Oh man, dude, let's get into some wacky theories. That that'd be crazy. I I can't even like conceive that right now. <laughs> that would be oh my gosh. That's like just knowing what I know about companies and their history and how." The license changed from one to another. That's really crazy. Lemon King said, "El Super Sonic, can you tell me how to do good on YouTube?" Um, I guess just make content. Well, for me, yeah. Let me talk about it in this perspective. For me, doing good on YouTube is making content that is insightful and has a purpose. So that's why the lost media videos are so good, and why I like them so much, and why I think they're so popular, is because they're insightful for people who might not know about certain lost media topics but also um they have a purpose to educate people on you know these specific cartoons and stuff that are lost so that's just kind of my motto and what i kind of do um but i guess generally speaking just quality videos that you know don't use clickbait and they aren't stolen from someone else or something like that kind of stuff if you stay away from that stuff and just be original with unique content which is really generic and kind of blah to say, but uh, I mean, I guess it's kind of what I did with the Mr. Ev videos. Yes, it's in the realm of lost media, but I get comments all the time saying, these videos are so original from other lost media I've seen. And why is that? Well, that's because most lost media videos try and make it be this spooky clickbait, lost episode, creepypasta, you know, scary thing. And my videos just tell it like it is. You know, usually they're pretty upbeat. Uh, the mystery is really the optimism in trying to find something not so much the pessimism in oh it's lost so i do not play overwatch beam blaster 10. i just never got into it or anything Um, hmm. Oh, wow, I was like really behind in comments. I think Andrew left, but he made an interesting point. Disney's been remaking live action remakes to their films since the 90s? Huh. Well, I guess I didn't know that, or it didn't occur to me. Huh. I'm trying to think now. Man, really? Well, if they have, I guess it wasn't a thought process I had until now. So, from a modern day perspective, I don't like it. Lish Zim said, "What's your favorite TV show?" Um, I gotta say, Chowder probably. I've always liked Chowder. I would probably say that's it. Honestly, I'm trying to think of other like older Cartoon Network stuff, but probably Chowder. Do you ever think there will be a Kakarot mod for Smash Four? Oh man. Well, there was supposed to be one of my. <laughs> One of my friends never finished it. If he's watching, he's probably not, but. Oh, nice. Andrew did the, uh, did the gotta go. That's awesome. I'm glad Andrew stopped by. That's really cool. Sonic Mania or New Super Mario Bros? Oh, I gotta say New Super Mario Bros. But probably just from nostalgia. Because that game was so nostalgic. Mania probably... Mania will, will probably reach a nostalgic level, but I don't think it could recreate like the childhood nostalgia of New Super Mario Bros. that I have. <laughs> Easter is not time for Switch, it's a time for chocolate. I'll super Sonic you. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Caleb said, do you like my channel? Uh, I don't think I've ever checked out your channel, actually. Cars 3? Yeah. Oh, and then Caleb also said, do you like me as a friend? Um, yeah. I'm glad you stopped by these streams and stuff. It's cool. Gabriel Burris said, it should be a goal of any, of any media buff to find and preserve lost media. I agree with that, yeah. That's definitely something I want to do, especially with the topics like Hover. I want to get the Mikey pilot found. I want more Johnny Bravo or JBVO episodes found. Like, yeah, that that's really on point. Super Saiyan 2 Goku found a canceled GameCube game called Marionette. I, hmm, I, I don't know. 
It sounds familiar, but I might be thinking of something else. Uh, Lemon King said, "L Supersonic, your thoughts on uh, on the Jimmy Neutron movie? I haven't seen it in years, but from what I remember, I liked it. I didn't have a like; it was a really good movie, and it actually brought me into the series. And I liked the series like pretty much all for its whole run. So, yeah, I definitely like it." JTV said, "L Supersonic, what's your favorite '90s cartoon?" Um, ooh, uh, I feel like I have a definite answer for this. Man, I gotta really think about that actually. I feel like I've been asked this before, and I like didn't have an answer, but then I thought of something, but then I thought of something better. I guess from like a, a modern day perspective, I like I would say maybe Kablam, just because it's so interesting to me. But I mean, I guess if you don't really count the just the like the interesting factor, um, I'm trying to think of like stuff I used to watch back in the day. It probably isn't like Cartoon Network really, like Dexter's Lab probably. I just remember like being obsessed with that. Oh, no problem, Valkyrie. YouTube has kind of been weird with not giving people stream links lately. I don't really know what's up with that, but yeah. No worries. Oh, Gabriel continues uh, their point by saying, especially in this age where we have all these, we have all this interconnectivity, we can find things we may not have been able to before. Yeah, that's, that's really true. Um, with the digital age comes all that. Um, just like, in the most basic sense of just like connecting, you know, to a lost media community. Yeah. So it's definitely, and like getting VHS tapes ripped online. Like I've mentioned all throughout this stream and stuff. That's like how JBVO is going to be found. That's how the Kappa Mikey pilot might end up online. So yeah, it's definitely a, a, a very useful tool. And like the way back machine too. That's like a really good tool. Ikoma-san said, El Supersonic U, there are actually some really hard to find Xbox 360 faceplates. Maybe you should do a vid on them. Actually, you mentioned faceplates. Uh, there were some GameCube uh, like jewel plates, jewel covers. I forget what they're called. Uh, I, I know there's like there was a, a there's a lot of obscurity surrounding those, so that video could actually happen. Since it's, you know, since it would be GameCube. Uh, Bean Blaster Tensed, would you ever want YouTube to be your job? Uh, oh, yeah, I for sure. Yeah, I would definitely like that. Um, even though, even though I, you know, I, I don't do YouTube all the time. And I've always had the thought of like, if I like sculpted all the time, I'd start to hate it because like it would, you know, it would, it would like be annoying to me. So maybe if I did YouTube all the time, it would be annoying to me. But honestly, like, if I could make videos and content and like get paid for it, like yeah, I, I, I you literally cannot complain about that to any extent. Mario Mario sixty four said, "El Super Sonic, your favorite moment in DBZ." <laughs> um, what have I even seen from DBZ? Maybe when Goku goes Super Saiyan for like the first time. That's a pretty classic moment. Zenono said. Thoughts on Sonic, Sadam, and Archie Sonic? I don't really like either of those, honestly. I just it's one sector of Sonic I never really got into and never really enjoyed. So I don't really have many thoughts on them. They're kind of just there. Don't really pay attention to them. Um, yeah, Caleb, I'd say I'd say we're friends. You watch my videos and stuff, so it's all part of the community. Everything is awesome. Studios is on the side of Sonic Mania. Oh dang. Do a toaster reveal. I'm not gonna reveal my toaster. Valkyrie is amazed that there was a Nintendo Switch at Walmart. Are those still rare? Because I wow, I didn't think they were still so rare. Like I really thought Nintendo would have fixed the problem by now. I guess I'd rather do a toaster reveal, Lemon King, but that's not gonna happen. Oh, Sonic Gamer wants the normal Mario figure. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, that could probably be arranged. If you uh, message me, I could, we can kind of work out the details. Uh, Super Saiyan 2 Goku said, have you heard of Ura Zelda? I have heard of Ura Zelda, yeah. 
Uh, probably wouldn't do a video on it because I know there are videos on it already unless I could like bring something new to the table or you know have some kind of new thoughts or new like thing on it because I'm not sure how old the videos on YouTube are. Um, but I would have to research it, research, bleh, research it extensively and that kind of thing. So, but I have heard of it. Oh, John left. Well, thanks for stopping by, John. Super Dave VGM, L Super Sonic, you are going to make the Jazzers Mega Man video with the missing rotos. Maybe at some point I will, um, if I get back into like collectible videos. Um, but for the time being, I actually have some other Mega Man videos planned that aren't collectible based. So, Wind Waker or Skyward Sword? Everything is awesome. Wind Waker. I haven't even played Skyward Sword. Pinata Time is here and said, just got here. What's up with Kappa Mikey, JBVO, and Kelly Toys? Well, the Kappa Mikey MTV pilot uh, was found on a VHS from a crew member, and they're going to try and get it online. With JBVO, um, it's that... Yeah, the, the Johnny Bravo block on Cartoon Network, and still we don't have any more new segments or anything from it. And then the Kelly Toy Chow, apparently that exists, and we really want to know where it is. So those are kind of the, the gist of that. What character would you want Nintendo to bring to the Smash series, Beam Blaster 10 said? It's a really good question, actually. It's like a really good question. I thought really hard about this for a long time. I really think if I could have them do anybody, I have four choices. Um, well, I guess to some extent, one would be like the Persona 5 protagonist, as we kind of said. But that's kind of, eh, okay, that was just kind of a, you know, I haven't thought about that super hard or long. My really main top three is um, Richter Belmont from like Castlevania, Rondo of Blood. It would have to be the Rondo of Blood design, not like the stupid other design. It has to be Rondo of Blood. Two would be Marco Rossi from the Metal Slug series. And then three would be the Demi Fiend from Shimagami Tensei 3 Nocturne. Those are like my top three. If Nintendo could get any of those characters in the game, um, that would be amazing. And I, they're all third party, so you know the chances of that ever happening are super duper slim. And there are problems with all of them, like uh, you know Castlevania's Konami, um, Marco Rossi uses uh, like guns and grenades and stuff. Or I guess Snake did, but I don't know. You know, uh, and then like Demi Fiend from Nocturne is like really obscure, and like that's an old property anyway, or an old game, I should say. Um, I'm missing like so many comments, you guys. Uh, yeah, I have a Twitter Super Saiyan 2 Goku. It's just at L Supersonic Q. Um, oh, uh, Caleb said, Do you know my channel? I don't think I've ever clicked on it, but I, I could. Can you talk about to protect and serve a lost cars tune? Dude, what? Cars tunes are lost? No. <laughs> My gosh, no. Anything new about the CN Kelly toys, uh, Pinata Time? Yeah, actually. Uh, well, I mean, if you haven't seen the Kelly Toy Chow video, yeah, um, there's a picture that was found that um, showcases all of the Kelly Toy CN plushes in physical form at Kelly Toys headquarters. So they do exist. Um, and multiples were made of some characters. But other than that, like, we don't know where they are now, uh, where the prototypes are now, or anything like that, so. JTV is peacing out. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, you didn't see that video. Oh, yeah. Nothing new from then, then. From then on. Oh, Caleb, did you say, like, chat? What? Oh, uh, I mean, I'm... <laughs> Probably not going to chat with anyone after this, or even go on Twitter and check notifications. Probably just going to log off. Oh, JTP's back. It's 9.30? Oh, it is 
lost slash mystery episode of L Super Sonic Q in middle school. Is that no no? Nice. Oh dang. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to read this Mr. Video VGM comment and this. Uh, Alchemim Chan comment, and then um, we're going to get going. So, Mr. Video VGM, the Super Sonic is one of the Mega Man videos going to be about the uh, canceled Mega Man game, the Mega Man Universe, uh, the first person shooter, or an online Mega Man. Can confirm it's not about any of those. And then. Alchemim Chan said, also, I'd like to ask, how do you feel about Invader Zim coming back? Also, sorry if I butchered your name. Um, I think it's really cool. Um, I remember being a fan of Zim back in the day. I haven't really thought about it in a while, Invader Zim. I don't really go out of my way to watch it or like remember it or anything like that. But um, I think it's really cool that like Samurai Jack came back, and now Invader Zim came back, which... I want to say it was because Jack came back. So, like, we could see a resurgence in, like, canceled, uh, like, 2000s cartoon shows, which would be really cool. I hope it encourages more companies and studios to bring stuff back. I think it's going to be great. I'll watch it just like Samurai Jack when it comes back. Oh, and, and they said it's okay if I butchered their name. All right, that's cool. Hope I answered your question um, well enough. I think it is going to be great, and um, I'll watch it. And I hope it just encourages more people to revive old shows. But with that said, it is 9.31, and my computer is at 4%. Uh, so I am I am going to get going. We made it. The two, Actually, it was two and a half hours. or No, no, no. Uh, two hours and like 15 minutes or so. Because I did start a little earlier than just um, 7.30. So we definitely made it. We hit our, our, our time goal. So uh, with that said, thanks for watching the stream, you guys. As always, there'll be another one next week, same time. Or it, it should be at 7 p.m., not 7.30. It was just a, a half an hour later because, like, Comic-Con stuff. Um, but it should be at 7 p.m. next week. So with that said, oh, oh and um, for videos, I'm not sure if there are going to be any videos this week. There might be, but most likely, um, like, like two weeks from now, there'll be a video. Um, or, like, not this week coming, but, like, next, like, the, the week after this, like, the week coming is more likely to have a video. Um, but I guess with that said, though, thanks for watching again, guys. I'm L Supersonic Q. Until the next video, Finn.